And YouTube is starting. <clears throat> okay, oh, hold on one second. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so any uh, anything you want to share? I'll start with stand up. Um, do you have anything to share? Any questions? Um, if you tried the homework, anything oh you <laughs> came across? Go ahead, Corey. Yeah, uh, I would agree with you. Great time, and um, I was I have it up here on my screen, and I was making effort, but uh, yeah, it's more um, intricate. This uh -huh. homework assignment in Free Academy. Free Code Camp, um, yeah. Yeah, free code camp. And um, I, I was a little confused on the um, placement of where it has to be, but I started rereading the instructions and really seeing their specific hints mm -hmm. on what you can accomplish. So it's, it's, it's wrapped up since the first week of uh, free code academy. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a learning curve at first. Um, it's definitely um easier if you have a like the the better you get at basic html and css um mm. the easier the bootstrap stuff will become because it'll be kind of like more intuitive um mm -hmm. but it's like one of those things where like you you don't really know where to start like i see susan says she has an error that she just can't figure out like what's wrong um and right. it's just one of those things where like when you find the error you're like oh doy like of course yeah. like, now i get it and you'll never like, I don't want to say never, but it's like a lot easier to find the error again next time once you find it once. And once you um, like continue to learn and like absorb that information, like errors are super, super, super helpful. And I can't tell you how much I've learned from like making mistakes and having to redo things and getting stuck to the point where like I have to give up and go back later. Um, so it's definitely a learning curve, but um, it's, it's, you'll get there. <laughs> so, um, and the point of the homework was not to like, you know, perfect it, or even if you didn't get all the way through it, as long as you tried it, um, if you're not finished with it by the end of the night, um, just submit what you've done so far, just, you know, show that you've attempted it and how far you got. And if you want to try it again at the end of the week, um, after we've practiced with it together, um, I would encourage that and you can resubmit another screenshot if you want, um, you know, or if you don't want to submit anything and just do it for yourself, that's also fine. Um, but the point of the homework was just practice and exposure. So um, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking for, you know, if you don't get all the way through the exercises, that's totally fine. So, um, but I, I just wanted you guys to give it in. a try. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh? I did get that second picture in with those kittens. So I, uh, nice. So uh, happy about that. And it's responsive. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is the cool thing about um bootstrap. So Karen, I see I see so many funny comments in, in chat right now. <laughs> I like it. Um <laughs> uh, okay. Um you you yeah, so Carolyn, that's a really good point <laughs> about the about the um, multiple classes and wanting to use commas. You you don't need commas. That's the coolest thing. So like, oh you, just, you just create, and this is why, um, remember when you, uh, when Max was teaching us all, or you all how to uh, create like folders and files and he said, no spaces, like don't put spaces and things. Uh, this is one of those, the reasons why um, you should really get used to not using spaces when you're naming things, because when you are working in actual code, those spaces mean it's a separate thing. So if you try to, you know, um, code something and you're writing two words and you put a space there, it's going to be like, I don't, if you put bootstrap and you put a space between boot and strap, it's gonna be like, I don't know what bootstrap is, <laughs> you know? Um, and so with the classes, what you can do this way um, is actually helpful is then you can camel case or hyphenate your classes and you can string classes along by using spaces. You don't need commas as a, as a, delimit as a delimiter or a separator. You just need a space. Um, and so 
Yeah, that was a really good observation on Carolyn's mm -hmm. part. So you can assign multiple classes to an element in HTML and then style that um, accordingly. And so when we go through our code tonight, you're gonna see that Bootstrap um, is going to assign many classes to an element and that's kind of gonna help it work um, the way that it needs to work. So it's pretty cool. Anything, oh, Susan, that's great. Yeah, that is the worst error ever. I do that so often, it's embarrassing. Um, I'm always missing some little, little thing, so. <laughs> yes, yes, it does, Karen. Um, <laughs> okay, um, anyone else have anything to share? It can be related to the homework, can be unrelated, um, anything at all. Any question, quest, oh, other question in the chat is all. Oh, let me look. You're all to piece. Oh, yeah. Um, no, you just go to, so uh, Carolyn, I'll reread your question, sorry. Um, so there's a really long URL that you paste in the top of the HTML document um, to bring Bootstrap into your code. Um, and Carolyn wants to know if there's a shorter URL or a shortcut so you don't have to save the link or copy and paste. Um, as far as I know, no, um, I think you can download Bootstrap and then you can include the files in your project um, if you want, but um, I've never done it that way. And then you still need to link those files in your projects anyhow. Um, and so you just have to go to Bootstrap, get bootstrap.com and copy it and put it in your project when you want to use Bootstrap. Okay. But um, <laughs> Cause I, um, I started actually writing it down in my notes yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's one of oh, those. No. And I actually wrote down the whole foolish thing for whatever <laughs> reason, I guess, penmanship exercise, but then it's like, this gotta be neat. I mean, I obviously wouldn't <laughs> type it in, um, but I didn't know cause usually they shortcuts for things. So anyway, but yeah, whatever. It's just, you know, yeah. maybe you can make a macro or something. I don't know. Okay. It's All cool. right. So I'm going to share um, my Go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, we've got a flashback to the homework last night was, mm -hmm. you know, when it started telling us to nest, I was just wondering, you know, it said nested in, in all HTML code in the nest. And then I was looking at, but, but, but I believe it's supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to be underneath the link. So that's where I was trying to pinpoint how to nest this thing. So it's wrapped right. That's, you know ah um like in your html in the html files yeah i yeah, was kind so, of wondering where to place it mm -hmm. so that's where like the tabs and stuff come in handy um mm -hmm. make sure that your code is tabbed correctly um uh -huh. so when you um I, I i will show you as we go through i'll explain this to you corey i'll make a note of that because um it's super important but it's going to help you like follow what is the parent of what children mm -hmm. and um it's just visually easier if you are tabbing your right. code correctly. So, um, and there is a formatter. Um, if we have time tonight, I'll have you guys, um, maybe I can do this in the beginning. Um, there's a format uh, tool called Prettier that you can install on VS Code and you can make it so that it save, it formats your code for you when you save the file. And so if your tab or your spacing is messed up, it will fix it for you. Um, as long as you have all your correct, like open and closing tags and things like that, it will know like what goes together and then it'll help you like kind of like separate that out the way it's supposed to, to it look. Was something, I don't know if it was with um, Christy or Karen or Max and it wasn't the product, but there's something inside um, in the utility, the like uh, Visual Studio Code and stuff that you do to form is more so than yeah, or yeah. this is yeah this is uh, an extra formatting tool but it's it's the same similar idea mm -hmm. uh, it's more robust. There, there is there is actually if you um, as Caitlin was saying as long as um, everything is coded out properly uh, what you can do is you can actually right click on your code and it will say format, and it will actually, if you have things not indented properly, it will properly indent at the proper levels for you within VS Code. Oh, yeah. right click and format. Right click and format. 
Mm-hmm. I have to do it all the time because I'm terrible with my indentation levels and that straightens it right out without a lot of fuss. Mm-hmm. Thank y'all. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and show you guys um, what we're going to be working on tonight. Um, this is what we are going to be coding. Sorry, give me one second. Um, all right, so I, why does it keep giving this? Um, I uh, went off of Christie's um, wireframes for this mock-up or this uh, web page, I should say. Um, and so where is my wireframe? Mm. Let's see. Um, I posted all the wireframes in Google Classroom as well. I don't know if you guys saw those. Um, just so you guys have them, you can pull them up on another screen if you want to, um, but it's just easier to keep track of them that way for this uh, week's classes. Um, it's in Slack, you said? Oh, Google yeah. Classroom. Yep, in Google Classroom. Yep, sorry. Um, and so this is the wireframe I used for the first page. Um, it's just the product detail page that we already worked on before. Um, I picked the one you guys were familiar with first. So Christie's um, wireframe includes a desktop version like this. Um, and then also includes a mobile version mm. like this. So um, what, what these two things are is um, in, the, in a job um, or in the workplace, you might get mock-ups like these or wireframes. You usually get high fidelity mock-ups. Um, I think, you know, like Christy talked about or, or Dana talked about, and um, you would get one for a desktop version and one for a mobile version. And your job as a developer is to make sure that both versions match your code. And how, how you do that is you make your page responsive. Um, and um, when we talked about responsiveness yesterday, that just means that your page is going to look different depending on the viewport of the device that the user is using. Mm -hmm. um, and so when somebody accesses your page on a mobile device, it should look like this. Um, and when somebody accesses it on a desktop, it should look more like this. And so the uh, thing, the one that I created for us to code together. So this is the finished code that you guys pulled yesterday. Um, I'm going to ask you guys not to look at this during class, um, unless you really, really get stuck on something and you miss something. Um, you need to go back and look um, and, you know, I don't know. But um, when we're working on this together, I really want you guys to try to like think it through um, and code along with me. So you get used to typing things out. Um, we are going to do some possibly some copy paste for classes and things like that because bootstrap gives you lots of examples that's really that's really an easy way to start and then if you want to adjust them you can adjust them um so we're gonna go through this hopefully as um clear as we can together um but so i just want to show you that here's a responsive this is how that that site responds when i'm on a mobile device um, and so this page looks, so my 4K monitor isn't very uh, good because I didn't add margin for the XL monitor, but I just went off of the monitors that we have. But um, here's an iPad. If I rotate the iPad, it looks like this. Um, if I go on, uh, let's do like iPhone X, looks like this. Um, this menu here 
pops open into a hamburger. Um, Caitlin, are, <laughs> in that last view that you showed, were those additional, um, the, the, those little black boxes, these are, are those thumbnails. additional images or are those just like decoration? No, these are the thumbnail images. Oh, those are the thumbnails. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, there you go. Okay. okay, so that's how this that's how this is gonna look at the end of class tonight. So you think are you guys ready for this? Um, I did omit part of the uh, I did omit the search just for the sake of simplicity. Um, I could add that here later. You can add it somewhere if you'd like to try to do that. But um, I wanted to keep our navigation bar um, and our header. Um, simple. Um, so all I did was links here and this is a brand logo. Um, Do you want them to have the link to that or is it already in Google or? Oh no, they have, they have the code, but we're going to code this from scratch together right now. So I'm just showing them mm -hmm. what it's going to look like. So what you're going to do. That's what I was asking you. I'm sorry. Do you want them to have the link to what it looks like so that they can bring it up on their own computers or no? Um, well, they, they, they have it, it's in GitHub. They pulled the code down, so they have it on their computers. If they wanna just open, if you guys wanna just open that HTML file that's in the classroom code base that you pulled, you can do that. It's the, in the day one, is that where you're asking, Dana? Yes, I am, you, okay. Yeah. Didn't Visual. you say you didn't want us to look at this unless we had to? So you okay. can open the HTML file so you can see what it looks like here, but, Try not to look at the actual code in the oh, okay. okay, look um, at the web page. Do you want yeah. us to open right. it from our finder or from Visual Studio Code? Yeah, so you can, um, if you go to your finder, um, your desktop, um, find your careers in code classroom code base, go to cohort two, go to module, what is this? Th three. three. <laughs> I thought it was four, but I'm three, two. <laughs> Day one, and then you can just right click on this and open, or you can do open with Chrome, and it okay. should pop pop this up. Okay. Okay, so we're not in the code for this. We're just getting the image this way. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, you also um don't have the yeah yeah no never mind you have this you're good. Um, and if you wanted to have the wireframe open as well, you could do that too. And the wireframes on Slack or it's no? In, it's classroom. in classroom, yeah. Classroom, I just asked. Dana just uh, dropped the link to that in the group chat, Corey, for the we yeah, for the wireframes <laughs> and re oh, references. Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's mm -hmm. at timestamp five fifty two p.m. Corey. Awesome. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Okay. So I do, uh, you know, I, I split my main monitor in half here mm -hmm. and I saw that that web page did adjust responsively to the column format. Yeah. Yep. Uh, gonna, I'm going to show you how, how uh, that works with the code that we're going to do. I have now I'm going to, I'm going to cheat because I want to make sure that our code matches what I already have given you. So I might be looking back and forth a little bit just to make sure we're on the same track here. Um, and so I know kind of like where to go next, but um, it should look pretty much the same as what you already have in your classroom code base code. So, um, and if it doesn't, um, that's okay. We'll get as far as we can get. Um, so what I want you to do is um, open Visual Studio Code, but have it be like empty. Don't open a, a folder or anything. If you have something open already, um, you can right click on Visual Studio Code down here and you can say new window if you want to keep your old stuff open somewhere else, that's fine. Um, but I want you to have like a fresh clean window to work in. Um, Karen wants, oh, go ahead. No, it's okay, I just saw it at the same time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Karen, yeah, we're gonna be using what we created yesterday, those empty folders, that's where we're gonna be writing our code. Um, you shouldn't need to create any other folders though, because um, 
we created the files and folder yesterday. But if you have your Visual Studio Code open, you can go ahead and click File Open. And that folder you created in your My Code folder yesterday, that's what you want to open. Um, wherever you want to open that is fine. Mine's not connected to GitHub, so I'm just going to open it at module three level. So this is my code side, not the class one, right? Correct. This is your my code. Just open the, the parent folder that says module three. Aaron. So you want us to open just the mod three one and then yeah. three accessibility and then week two folders within it, correct? Yep, you could go. You could go just to the week two folder. That's completely up to you. Um, mine's not connected to GitHub, but at least start with. At the very most, don't go any further than week two when you open it up. <clears throat> just down to week two, correct? Um, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Karen wants to know day one with bootstrap. Yes, that's the, the um, folder we're gonna be working in. I'll create that folder too. You should day have already one. created, you already created it, Corey, yesterday. Oh God. I'm not seeing it either. We did all that together after class. Right, mine's not showing up in week two either. Do we have to pull it again? No, this should be your own code. I don't think we... Um, we don't have it. My week two folder is empty. Empty. Yeah, but you created the folders and the, and the empty files, right? In my code? Yeah. Yeah, so I just have an empty week two folder, but mine doesn't say um, day one through two with bootstrap images index. Like, I remember doing that yesterday, but mine, it's, I'm not in there today. I thought on class side, I thought we did. <clears throat> but did, did you want us to copy those folders over to? Uh, so, our, this is I weird. This path does not exist. We already did this. Carolyn, you moved yours to your desktop. Remember? Oh, so I'm going to have to use Finder to put them back in. You're, no, you're just going to have to click file open and open it from the desktop folder because you moved yours. Right. That's what I, I meant. I didn't express yeah. that very yep. well. That's probably your problem. Um, but it, one of my problems. <laughs> no, I mean, just the one that you're having right now. Um, oh, well, yeah. No, just anyway. Alina, um, you're in your my code folder. You More created a week two. Mm -hmm. If you don't see the other folders you created yesterday... Um, I thought I did that on a class side. No, you created it in your my code folder because you're not supposed to create anything in the classroom folder. Yeah, no, I created it in my my code folder and I'm clicking on um, the week two folder that we created there yesterday. We and I remember seeing everything like I remember doing it, but hmm. I don't know why it's not on my computer. Should I pull it again? If you, But there's nothing to pull because it's it's your local stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah know, except like is mine is attached to my GitHub account. So maybe yours is too. Uh, I should have never deleted that old VS code that I had yesterday. Yesterday, the VS code that I just exited out because you told us to open up a new one. It had all of the stuff in it. But now when I click new window, it doesn't have any of the stuff in it anymore. We also have an update. So <laughs> if you don't have it, um, you can just create the folders again. So if, you, if you're in your my code, and you have module three folder, and you have your week two folder, um, you can just create this day one folder if you want and mm -hmm. just type out those files again um, if I, you don't have them. I have a suggestion just in case folks may have misplaced those folders. If you use your spotlight by hitting command in the space bar and type in the word day one or day one hyphen two, if it is anywhere on your computer, it will show up in, in that spotlight and you can click on it and then uh, use the finder to find out 
where you might have placed it, but mm-hmm. it's, it's that, that was a good um, idea because I actually sure. found it. Oh, you there. did. So Great. Should I, so should I just click and drag it to my week two folder then? Yeah, if you, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're hit, hitting command space bar and you're doing a keyword search okay, within well, the spotlight. The Let's see, I'm getting copy. So then I also need to download images and that's all. Well, look for images. And then put them all in module three. So you found it, Corey. Uh, you, what you just told me helped me uh-huh. find it. And oh, I great. think it was on the classroom side, I think. Okay. I created the folder. I just got to copy them on over to okay. my code. Yeah, this this is this is a common error. So day one is that day one. I'm so guilty. My um little tree icon, my fidget spinner. <laughs> Um, has a few now that I've done it, but they're all things like the DS store. Can I just get rid of those? Yes, you can. You can just undo those, delete them. You don't need those. Thank you. And one's an icon, something, something that's, but it's untracked anyway. So yeah, it's just my desk. Oh, if I, it's a desktop icon, so it'll probably go away. So I'll leave that. All right. and then put them in now this card changes boom all right module three all right so there's just one thing left in there and i don't care it's not gonna hurt me much (laughs) (laughs) okay so after adding all of those to uh my week two folder should i basically open a new VS code so it can load. Oh, never yeah. Mind. Yep, you can go to file, um, close folder, and then you can go to file and it won't close the whole window or just close the folder that you opened. And then you can go to file open and reopen the folder that you need. I have a question. Do you, it's not related to this. Do you guys know of like a hack or a shortcut? Like if you X out a window on accident, can you bring it up somehow or is it just gone? No, it's just gone. That sucks. <laughs> there's no undo function for that i don't think i could use undo for a lot of those things undo move undo your whole life i don't know <laughs> yeah you're just sol oh, for lack of know. a better term my life story <laughs> yeah I, I i can tell you though but that just like microsoft word though if vs code happens to crash and you need to reopen it that it will restore the file that that you were just working on yeah i've had that happen yeah i've had that happen a few times and i can say i can't remember a time where it crashed and i open it back up and the file was not there more more often than not the file is still there when it crashes (laughs) yeah that is really helpful actually um my computer actually did that today. I had a RAM upgrade in my work computer and um, forgot to shut it down first. <laughs> and so it like shut down on its own and then restarted and I closed everything, but like everything that I had opened popped right back up. So yeah, it was fine. Luckily I wasn't working on anything super important that I was gonna lose, but. I think what I can do is I'll put a note to myself too, because, um, uh, Shah actually found some settings so that we could see the um, the collapsible um, file structure instead oh, yeah. of seeing everything go across. I'll look in VS Code documentation to see if there's a way that we can force VS Code to ask us if we really want to close a window before it just closes it. Because a lot of programs will say, hey, do you really want to close this? And it, it really annoys me that VS Code doesn't do that. But I'm hoping that there's a way that we can configure it to do that. So that was a yeah. good question, Elena. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that, that issue, did everybody get that figured out? Is that looking better for everyone now? With yeah. the folders looking like this instead of across? Yes, that, that's them. wonderful. I, I was so glad. That I usually poke around and find those things. And I'm, I'm really grateful to class member that did because I little things like that drive me nuts. I just want to do my stuff, you know? <laughs> so that's great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So... If everybody's good to go, um, the only other thing you'll need is the image um, that was in the images folder. If you didn't already do that, um, 
I think I forgot to make sure you guys did that. So I'm just gonna go into my finder and I'm gonna go in my classroom code base, cohort two, module Yeah, three. we didn't get an image yet. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, week two, okay. day one. And if you open the images folder, you can just command C on this image okay. file. Okay, so it's in the classroom code base. It okay. is, yep. And then just click on the image folder in your code that's open in VS Code and just paste it in there. Okay. And it should actually, you might have to do it in the <laughs> There we go. <clears throat> Nope, that's my other thing I need. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. I put little um, icons on my different folders. And like for the careers in code, code base main folder, I have a stop sign. So I remember you don't mess in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> so if you do want to, if you do have to get that image in there, you have to do it through Finder. I won't let you paste it through VS Code for some reason. Wait, where do we get the image from? From the classroom code base. Um, that you pulled. So you can just do it in Finder. Yeah, I put it in Finder, but some reason v VS Code is not reading it. I don't see it in a tree here. Yeah. Is that cool Cool and not good? No. So, um, so if you go to the classroom code base and just copy the image and then go back to your My Code. Yeah, I did that in Finder. And, and paste it. That. Yeah. Oh, in Finder, not in V. Okay. Yeah, okay. it won't. It won't let you paste it when you're in VS Code. You code. have to paste it in the Finder itself. That explains mm -hmm. it. And so, I think I accomplished that. I did, um, but I just opened up VS Code to and try to look through the system, and I didn't see the file. But I'll double check because no, it's not. Yeah, headphones is in my Finder view, the actual image, but then when I hit Module three views. I see the the carrot for images, but I don't see it showing the actual so, file. So pay, try to paste it again in Finder. Paste it again. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it just didn't. I have a question too. I'm still having trouble. If I want to open, you know, more than one Finder window to work with two, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do all the different shortcut keys and stuff, and none of them seems to be working for me. Um, I think. Let me just try. You can just do command N. If you're open, if your finder open, do command N. Yeah, if I, so if I have one finder window open, I do command N from anywhere in that window, it should open a separate finder window. Yeah, it just did it for me. And, okay, I'll have to try again. I think my Mac is out to get me. <laughs> I think someone else said something like that earlier. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. All right, so. Copy headphones. I'm still paper. looking for the headphones image. There we go. You it's want us to get it? Yep. Okay. In the cruise and code classroom code base, cohort yeah. two, module three, week two, day Fire. one dash two, images folder. Paste item. I should say paste image. See, but my, I don't know, I did something <laughs> wrong because my career. So you want us to go into like the code base? Yep. Cohort two. I got module it. three. So I got module three. There's no folders in there. It's empty. So did you did you, and you pulled yesterday? Yes. Do you have, I thought I did. Do you have two copies of the code base by any chance? No. I don't know. Because I remember doing all of this yesterday. Like I remember pulling it and everything. Yeah. So should I go on GitHub and then Wait, is the repository in GitHub? Yep, it's in the Hack Up State. Okay. Code, classroom code base GitHub. If you just want to go from there, you can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Or, I'll catch up. Actually, let's see if I can. Um... Okay. And I have another question too for that. Um, the grid image. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm just. Are we actually going to plop that into something as a background or we're just referring to it? Do, I mean, if I just have the web, you know, have it open in a, its own little web tab, it's just there. Or do we have to interact with it? No, you're just you're just using it as a reference if you just want to it. look at it. Okay, yeah. Great. Great. Yep. 
And then trying to, I'm trying to get that site up you had too. Um, it should be the index HTML in the day one, two folder, right? Correct. You can just right click and open in Chrome and it should pop up. I keep trying to click on your finder. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That ain't going to help me. No, I'd be sorry. That's not you. This is, you know, where am I, right? Okay. Um, and Alina, that'll be also... in the classroom code. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. You're welcome. That. Shaw posted the image in Slack. Alina, if you just want to grab it from there. Three, two, day one, two. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's funny. Um, Index. The, the VS Code did read the headphone image once I repasted it. So then, yeah. um, should I? I should see those other files um, in my VS Code if it's because uh, it doesn't look like it's reading them right now. So paste the others as well. Well, if you're in VS Code and you're in my code folder, mm -hmm. in I know you created them yesterday, so I'm not sure why you're not seeing them. So just make sure you're in the right folder. Yep. Um, so I had success with the headphones and I, I, I deleted it and repasted it and it popped up in VS Code. So you want me to do that with the three remaining of files? Right? Yeah. If you can't, okay. if you can't find them, then go ahead and do that. Yeah. You can just create the files in VS Code if you need to. Just mm. add the file and <laughs> Type out the names. Okay. I'll just type up and create the file and type out the names you said. Oh, okay. So the headphones image, the only thing that we needed, everything else should be yep. good to go. Yep, that's the only image that I'm using. Uh, I tried to keep it simple with just one image. Okay. That's so weird. That is really weird. I don't know why. That's I'm going to have to. Um, reach out to you or somebody else later on just to make sure that I have all the files that I need because my code base folder doesn't have any thing in it. Give me one second guys. I got to turn <clears throat> one second. Desktop CIC series and code two Sorry, I need to drink water, but I don't like doing that on camera. So. <laughs> You're fine. I was, I caught myself the other day. I was eating some cashews or something. And I tried to, you know, chew with my mouth closed and stuff. But a couple of times I'm like, holy mackerel, that looks, you know, block me out. Um, <laughs> so I have the grid to look at. I have the image on the, I have like a little website thingy. I get the image and the files where it goes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm good to go, just so you know, I know other people are still figuring things out, but I like for once, I'm not like the last one. So. <laughs> um, um, so. Can everybody just do my favor, like show like thumbs up if you guys are ready, good to go. If you don't thumbs up, I'm just gonna assume that you need time or help. Caitlin, I have a question. So all of my like, so when I clicked on day one through two, like the down arrow, then the images arrow popped up and then like the headphones, index, HTML, normalized CSS, stylus CSS, everything that we put in yesterday is there. So should I just delete everything that I just created? <laughs> I'm so confused. Uh, yeah. So basically I have two copies of everything because everything was within the day one through two with bootstrap. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah, if you created doubles, you don't want the doubles. So um, just delete everything. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm feeling kind of like crappy today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, is that going to affect anything later on that everything is within the day one um, through two bootstrap? No, that's where it's supposed to be. Oh, okay. All right, Karen's all set now. That's good. Okay, wait, no, yeah. Oops. All right. Reactions, no set. I have too many windows open. Okay. Hey, Caitlin, I'm actually um, hitchhiking. That's what the thumb up is for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. I'm trying to make you feel better by laughing. Where, where are you going? <laughs> 
I'm right here. I'm like super glued to this chair, so I'm going no way. <laughs> okay. Sorry you don't feel well. That stinks. That's fine. I had my first um, vaccine today, and I was expecting to feel fine, and I just don't. Um, May I ask which one you got? <laughs> um, I was actually supposed to get the Johnson & Johnson one, so yeah. I'm sure you all heard of all that mess. So oh, I ended up yes. Getting Pfizer, which is My fun. son has a friend that was knocked out with that one the yeah. Pfizer. okay yeah I, my <laughs> husband and i and matthew did moderna but i guess the second dose is when you're supposed to kind of really not yeah have fun, I, that's yeah. why i wasn't expecting it but i feel like well, nauseous yeah, so. yeah my first my first dose um i had a little soreness in my arm but not as much as a flu shot mm -hmm. and then like a couple hours later i started to get kind of chilled and stuff and felt just sort of achy bakey and then i was fine the next day so yeah could be all in my head too who knows <laughs> who knows all right guys i hope you feel better thank you i'll be okay i'm tough i'm fine um <laughs> if i go off camera for some reason and don't say anything then you should <laughs> but i'm fine <laughs> we're praying for you uh we need your address so when we call 911 for you <laughs> and all right it doesn't come to that <laughs> so we're gonna get started <laughs> So the first thing that I want to do is just create our basic HTML file uh, base. Um, and so I'm going to use that shortcut. Um, but I do want to just make sure you guys kind of like know what's here. Um, Can you make that a little bigger? Yep. Thank you. Tell me when to stop because I feel like it looks different on my screen than it does on yours. Is that good? Okay. That, that looks good to me. Does that look good to everyone else? And uh, yes, did you okay. do a, what was the shortcut you did to get that cope to pop? Oh, in? I'll delete it. Hold on. Uh, so, so I just hit exclamation mark. And then I can press enter. So oh. I think I need to create files again because my index HTML already has the code in it. So, right. Um, like, like a lot of code, <laughs> like everything yeah oh it did has, you it has um 186 lines um you might have just i wonder if you just copied this stuff i already did that sounds like the you can just delete just like select all like control a and delete it and start fresh okay what well, my normalized css code and style css leave those okay. no get rid of the style one we're gonna do the normalized one in a second though so delete all this. I had the same thing. Yeah, your Wait, files should be empty. Your files should be starting empty. Okay. So you said delete style CSS, like completely? No, just delete what's inside of it. Okay, and then, I'll, all right, so delete all the code inside of everything. Yes. So we're creating an index.html file inside the headphone. Oh, no, that headphone should pick an image. Oh, day never one. Mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, my brain just took it. All right. All right. I, okay. It's already here, so. Does that help you? Oh, good Lord. Sorry. Okay. English is not my first language. <laughs> hey, Caitlin, you said you want them to delete the, delete the code inside of index.html. And uh, what was the other file? Their style.css. Uh, okay. I mean, generally, mm -hmm. yesterday when we created these files, they should have just been empty because you just created like the skeleton. Basically, you just created your files in your folders. So if you do have code in these files in your my code folder that we're coding in today, just you can um, del delete the code inside of them. Don't delete the files or anything. Just delete what's inside of them. So you're starting from scratch and you're coding along with me. And, and you want us to clear out the normalize as well? Um, yeah, it's not a big deal. You can leave that. I'm just going to go. Okay. I'm going to like show you again how to get that and how to put that in there. But you can just leave that. That's not a big deal. I'm not worried about Anything? that one. Okay, delete the content of that one. Yeah. So. Got it. So I have my basic HTML skeleton here. Um, and. She had exclamation point. I'm going to go to my normalized CSS. I'm just going to Google it. It's this first one that pops up. Um, with Bootstrap, uh, you don't technically need this, but I use it anyway. Bootstrap kind of does its own reset for CSS. Uh, 
under the hood, but I just like to put this in all my projects anyway. So um, I'm gonna go to download. Um, it doesn't actually download anything. Um, it just opens this page. You command A. My computer's going so slow. Um, command C to copy. Um, then I'm gonna go back to my normalized file that I already created. And I'm gonna paste that in there and I'm gonna save it. Um, this isn't, I'm not gonna touch this again. This is all I'm doing with this. So if your normalized CSS um, file is already filled out, perfect. Um, if you need me to go through this, if you need the website, I'll keep it up here for a second. Um, Can you make it bigger? I can't read it. Yep. Here, I'll show you what it looks like in Google because it's a bit um, easier. So if you Google normalize CSS, it's this first link right here. Okay. And you can just click that, click download, highlight. So command A, copy, it highlights everything. Copy, command C, I'm gonna go back to my VS code and I will paste that in there in the normalized file, that's it. You can save that and we're done with that file. Um, so this is how I set up all my projects. Normally when I start, I like to do kind of like housekeeping here. I get my index started, I put my normalize in. Um, and so with my normalize, I have to make sure I import it into my HTML document. So what am I gonna use? Atref or you're linking it. I'm linking it, yeah. Um, and it's just like a CSS style sheet. So when I type link, I can just say, I can go down to this like CSS option and I can hit enter and it kind of like does this part for me. Um, but instead of style.css, I need to call it normalize.css because that's what I named it in my project. And I'm gonna save that. I have a question and it's not important, but when, you're, okay. in VS, when you're in VS code and you have that all the way to the right, there's a, like that weird mini little, like this, I can't, your, my, your, your face is covering it, but yeah, on the right, that top where it's like the code is tiny. What is yes. that? Um, it helps you like, it helps you, let's see if I can like show you a bigger file. See how this file is super long? Yeah. Um, so what I can do is I can drag this like highlighted part um, and like, say I want to delete this right here uh -huh. and I save that and then I move. It's going to say like, hey, you had some change up here um, and this is where you, you've, you've uh, changed this file. And so if I need to go back to like where I was, it just helps like bookmark that. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it will like stay. See, like this change isn't staying, but like on my work one, it does. Um, but basically it's just like a way for you to see like where you are in the file as a yep. whole. Um, and so you can kind of like, um, I think if I set like a, I don't know if I set a breakpoint here, it'll work. I don't think I can do breakpoint CSS, that's silly. But um, yeah, it's just like a bookmark type tool, like a, almost like a, navigation in a way and i can yeah, just click like, all the way up here i can click all the way down here it's just faster that's all yeah um, okay. I, I think uh, i think karen has a question karen are you still trying to get the normalized file from the web page oh on the download page yeah so you just have to hit download and then all the text that comes up you can do command a and it will like highlight it and then do command c and copy it you don't have to like actually download anything. Uh, Alina wants you to go back to your index.html page. Okay, cool, Karen, good. And uh, Karen, uh, where we were talking about link, um, that is when Caitlin was actually in the HTML file and the students were asking how to um, associate the normalize.css style sheet 
within the HTML. And that's when we were talking about links. So I don't want you to get um, a link to normalize on the website confused with linking it within the HTML. Oh, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a, once you get to normalize on the web page, it's uh, you hit download, but then you copy and paste it into VS code. And it's called normalized CSS. But where you link it, you link it inside of index.html. And I know that might be a little confusing. Um, I might have to do a, a breakout with her, Caitlin, either you or I, just to get her caught up on that if, the, if she's still. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can go right ahead. Um, okay, yeah. Karen, let me. Okay, she said she got it. Oh, okay, perfect. All right. Um, good, we're moving along. All right, so. A syntactic question in the uh, link ref equals style sheet href normalize.css. You have a space and then the end slash and the end. Like yes. That's <laughs> just you, um, my formatter. Do you have to have the space there or can you take it out? No. It and just, it, my formatter does it for me. Yeah. Um, it won't do anything if you don't. And then in Bootstrap, you don't have to have that slash, do you? What do you mean? I thought one of the exercises I was going through, it said you can or can't, you can include the slash before the closed angle bracket or not. Okay, we'll get back to that. That doesn't matter. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if there is a space there or not. It's just what, okay. Yeah, the space doesn't really matter um, for okay. this. Uh, it'll still read this the same way. And don't forget to save early and often, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so, save. thank you. I got to hit save. Yep, you should always save. Right. And um, I don't see that button. Just do command S, Corey, in your command file. Yes, gotcha. Yep, it's a lot quicker. Yep, got it. <clears throat> okay, a question. Well, these are the standards. Um, th these are the standard ways you set up when you start code. You, you, you did that exclamation point to start kind of this header looks like oh, yeah it's, it's like um yeah it's all the things in the head tag don't confuse head and header because they're two different things so the head of the html document contains all this data about the page and mm -hmm. the header would be inside this body tag and it would contain the header on your actual page so your header on your page would contain like your navigation, your logo, your search, that kind of stuff. That wow. would be a header. The head tag up here is different. This doesn't actually show up on your page at all mm -hmm. because this is the body of your page. This is where people will see things. Whatever's inside of here, it's what's going to show up on your page. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything outside of this body tag doesn't really show up. You can style this HTML element as well. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, like, I, I, you do, like, basic, like, margin things with HTML, but you don't, like, actually put anything within, like, here above the body. Okay. Hey, Lynn, so I have a quick question title, for you. The title shows up in the tab of the browser, so we want to change that to cohort to shop, like, your sample. Correct. Yep. You can do the title, whatever you want. I did that just for uh, fun. You can change That's your title, title whatever you file. want. That's a good point. So Kyle, so when you're in um, Chrome, this dot, this title is just the title of the document. What is your web page? What do you want to show up on the tab? So if I go to Chrome and oh, I'm going to get rid of this Zoom thing, this tab. is the title. So whatever you put in this title is going to show up here. Right. Okay. Hey, Kayla, can you go back to the HTML file and can you, um, okay, uh, can you, okay, if, if um, you all look at line number eight, can you just uh, blow it up, uh, zoom in one more level? Line number eight is where you link the link normalize that CSS to the HTML file. So someone okay. had a question. Right. So Fabio, you had a question. Um, mm -hmm. does it does it get pasted in there? It it doesn't. The so when we um so we went to the web page where we just copied and pasted normalize 
into um, a, this, the CSS file that you would create called normalize.css. And then mm -hmm. you close it, you're done with it. And then all that you do from there is go to the, India, the index file that Caitlin has up and you type in line number eight that she has there. I'll go ahead and just grab that. Caitlin, I'm just gonna screenshot it and I'm gonna throw okay, it up in the Slack. You. Okay. So the head pretty much sets up the uh, parameters for the web page or for formatting a little bit. Is that what I'm reading? The head, yeah. The mm -hmm. head is just gonna set up some basic things about this, the page and how it should um, render in the browser and that kind Got of stuff. It. So this UTF-8, basically this displays any character that you can think of. This is like a character set essentially. Um, so that's what that means. Okay. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of like metadata. This is where you would put like your um, SEO stuff, your search engine optimization information that you wanna show up. Um, you could do a description. Um, you can do um, like, so like when you search on Google for something, if you have a um, description, I actually put up a, a like a thing on MDN to help you guys um, because we haven't really gone over like what each part of that H that head part does. Um, but I'm going to send this along. You guys can take a look. Uh, but essentially, um, I'm trying to find where it is. So here's a metadata where you can have a description of your, like this is a description of the site and then the content. And this is what would show up in Google if you searched like under here. Oh, so right? some so websites, stuff, you know. Uh, uh, this ahead. is just like stuff that you need to have or you right? like it's not completely necessary, but on a real website, you should try to include those things for your search engine things and stuff like that. Um, so I will send this little link in Slack um, just because I think that's helpful. Yeah, Max did go over the first class he taught. He went through what each thing meant. Oh, OK. I wasn't in that class, so I wasn't sure. Um, thank you. So if you forgot, then <laughs> you can mm -hmm. go ahead and look at that. And if you don't mm -hmm. care, then that's fine, too. <laughs> so uh, years ago, I used to work with a community organization and we were trying to it had an old address. When you typed in the organization, it had the old address, not the updated one, although is, so is it the metadata that needed to be adjusted for the new uh, um, organization and the web page? Because on Google, it was. Yeah, it could be. It could be something a little bit different. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. probably something similar. Similar. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to. Well, this is going to be a bootstrap project. So we're going to we're going to get bootstrap going in our project. So I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com. And I'm going to click get started. And I'm going to copy that CSS link. Um, actually, I just want to make sure you guys see where this is. So in the get started section where it says introduction, you can scroll down a little bit and it says CSS right here. That's what we want. And so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my Visual Studio code. I'm going to paste that underneath my normalized file. Um, does anybody remember why that matters? Because it's going to override trying. everything else. Yeah, exactly, Susan. So if if I put this above my normalized file, my normalize will override Bootstrap if there's anything styled in normalize that's also styled in Bootstrap and vice versa. Right. So like because normalize is like the simpler reset, I want Bootstrap to go after that because it's like I'm starting with a clean slate. So the bottom thing is always the most recent that your thing your browser reads and uh, and obeys, right? Correct. And so the, the cool thing about Bootstrap and what we're going to do um, also is that the style.css file that we have 
we can override bootstrap with our style.css file as well. If we place that underneath this bootstrap link, um, we can restyle things. So like bootstrap gives you basic things, but you can customize them to your own liking using your own style sheet as well. So that's how that's gonna work. I know it's really hard to do this like virtually when you're on one screen. So I'm just trying to give enough time, but. So question mm -hmm. for the, the regular style, st well, for the normalized style sheet, we actually have link relative equals style sheet for the, um, the one we just got. <laughs> the yeah, the one we just one. got. Um, the bootstrap one. Mm -hmm. We don't have to put in link rel equals bootstrap. It's here. It just, it's still a style sheet. sheet. Oh, so I could put it before if I wanted to, and it wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. Everything to look the same. It's just the way that it, there it is. Yeah. Right. They just put their, um, it says style sheet though. It doesn't say it's still a style sheet. Oh, it's all, they're all going to say that. Right. Yep. And then it tells it's you still just CSS. Cool. Thank mm -hmm. you. And the reason that the order doesn't matter that the href went before the, it does. Oh, yeah. yeah. Correct. And, and you, you bring up something I want to point out is that our href says normalize that CSS because our href, this link is pointing to something inside our project. We don't need to link to an outside source with bootstrap. They have their minified CSS file online. And so you need that online link to link to their, their style sheet. Their style sheet's not in your project. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have this external href right here. Does mm -hmm. that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that goes to the bootstrap online um, information. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. I, it goes directly to their style sheet that they have online. Um, and that's why like, if you wanted to download it, you could just put their style sheet in here. But the benefit to doing it this way is that if this updates, then, um, or like say there's like a, an issue, then you it'll fix it because it'll link to this this thing. You don't have to go and like change it in your actual code here. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's super helpful. Um, it could be it could be bad as well <laughs> sometimes depending on what they change. But um, mm -hmm. generally, this is this is nice to have. It's just less files in your folder um, and just easier to keep track of here. How did um, you get that follow link pop up? in the blue box. Oh, here? I just hovered. Oh, hover. OK, I'm using the trackpad, so I guess that's a different kind of hovering. All right. <laughs> I'll try not to hover. OK, thank you. Hey, Lynn, this uh, the boot, the other uh, boots. I was going to say the bootleg, the boot <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Sorry, um, I just uh, put a, a, a helper um, screenshot and uh, directions in Slack. For anyone who okay, wants great. To revisit that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's just get something on our uh on our page here. So I'm just gonna write hello world or I'll do hello bootstrap. <clears throat> I'm gonna save it. Um, I'm gonna right click on my HTML file. I'm gonna reveal and finder. Should we have linked our style.css as well? Uh, not yet, but oh, yes, okay. we, will, we will when we actually put something in it. <laughs> okay. If you want to do that now, you totally can. Okay, cool. And so I got my index.html is showing up. I have some text here. So I know that now when I start making changes, things are going to show up. So if you want to get your file opened in your browser so you can switch back and forth. So that was going into Finder and then. So you can just right click on your file, Corey and VS Code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Click Reveal in Finder. Reveal in Finder, got it. And then it'll pop up here and you can just right click on that and say open or open with and click Chrome. So we're revealing our oh, HTML file. Correct. Thank you. And whatever you typed on your in your code here should show up on that page somewhere. Um, and you'll notice that the font is not Times New Roman. Um, and that is because Bootstrap, I've always used that. <laughs> yeah, and that is because Bootstrap overrides that already. I, I, I'm re I'm getting reformed very quickly. <laughs> All right. 
I also put mine in a paragraph uh, yeah. tags, and that showed that there's the padding has been removed from the paragraphs by the normalize. Perfect. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, okay, um, so show up. I have a, a white page. Did which, you save your file? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those people that I save early and I save often. Try this. Reload. Nothing. Hmm. Oh, the normalize blew out the styling. This happened with Max, and that's why we have a white page. Is anyone else getting that? Well, did you what? What'd you say? Sorry. When we normalized something before, we got a white page because it just blows out like everything. Yeah, but did you put any text in your HTML? Yep, I changed. Oh, besides the title. Yeah. Um, I what should I put? Uh, I just put I just put hello bootstrap the the body the you just know in the body. It'd be nice if I had something in my body. Okay. Yeah. Yep. There you <laughs> that go. That's like it. <laughs> it's snowing. Oh, yes. My computer is like really hating me today. I'm so sorry. It's lagging. So I can, no, I am going to need changes. I don't know what I'm going wrong. All right. So this is exciting. I have, this is an e-commerce site for wireless headphones. Ooh, I <laughs> All right. We'll be doing do. And do you want me to format it or anything? No, that's fine. We're going to delete what you just wrote anyway. I just wanted oh, you to make sure you have what's on the. I to come up with it. I, I just want to make sure oh. that your file's come, coming up right. So that's as no, we keep going. Not. Let me try this again. You can see your changes. All right. So, all right. So, so we here. have a right click. We're going to add um, the first element on our page, which is going to be our header. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I'll get my. Nope, it's still white. Yeah. Anyone else having that? Yeah, I am. I don't know so if I it's not just me. I'm not, I'm not happy you're having that issue, but I just, you know, huh. So we have our normalized precedes the bootstrap in order. Yes. Okay. So we did that right. Or I did that right. Or however many people are sitting on my computer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, hmm. I wonder if it's just Chrome being an idiot. Or should we be doing this in Safari? You can just open it in Chrome, it's fine. Okay. The browser doesn't matter that much for this. I actually prefer Chrome for this, um, just so we don't run into any weird issues. Chrome's kind of the most stable environment, oh. so. Well, it's off its meds then. <laughs> um, all right, oh, so. <clears throat> see, right click. Yes, I hate this Zoom bar, it gets in my way. All right, so oh. in Bootstrap, um, we looked at this a bit yesterday. Um, we have some, we have a customized section. We have a layout section that has like our containers and stuff. We have a content section, a forms section and a component section. We're gonna work with a lot of these components, like not a lot of them, but mostly we're gonna use these components to help us add elements to our page that are responsive. So uh, in our header, we have our nav, right? Oh, and so our nav, oops, sorry. I wonder if I'm saving to my GitHub account, but you have to push to do that, right? You're, you're working off of your local desktop. Is right, that, but my, mm -hmm. yeah, but my, my code, my, my code is already hooked with my GitHub account. Mm -hmm. Right, but you haven't 
you haven't um, done any of your GitHub commands at this point. So I don't need to in this case, it should still show up, right? So are, okay. are you in VS Code? And yes. okay, if, you, if you're on your VS Code, you can right click and um, in the menu, you should find something that says show in default browser, which should bring it right up in Chrome. Is that what you're doing? Um, I right clicked on my index.html file and I chose the reveal right. and finder. Right. Um, reveal and finder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or should I just go right up to open with? I hit the reveal and finder and then got the menu okay. of the files. Yeah. It's okay. HTML. And, and a white right. You know, do you want to pull them into a breakout room to see if they can figure open out what's going on? I can. I just wanted to ask you one question. Um, Karen wants to know, um, and, and I realize, Caitlin, that you're not working with style.css right now, but should there be something waiting in style.css or does it matter if that's empty? Oh, yeah. I just answer her. There shouldn't be anything in there yet. We didn't touch it yet. All right, then. So uh, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. see. File. All right, um, I will go into a breakout room. What what time should I be back? Are they taking a break tonight? I was gonna try, but I, we haven't gotten super far, but we're gonna take mm -hmm. a break around 7.15. Around 7.15, okay. Have, like, All right. At this point. Okay, then, so I will create the breakout room and uh, who needs to follow me in there? Corey. I will. I can, okay, um, I'll just create oh. the room and if anybody, if anyone needs mm -hmm. to jump in, just jump in. Uh, let's see. I'm creating one Still breakout one. room. I'll click create. And let's see. Hopefully, I'll put myself down for more than one minute. Uh, let's see. So it's about 6.52. Yeah, that happened before. 6.52. Okay, I'll just do like 15 minutes. If it would let me type, what's going on here? Five. See. Well, maybe I need to actually do this. No, it won't let me do that. So if everybody has their bootstrap docs open, I want you to go to the component section in the docs um, and find the nav bar. Navs and tabs? Uh, oh, nav bar, so yep. One down. Yep, you got it. <clears throat> Did uh, does everyone see the breakout room message? Uh, I have all these screens open here. Okay. Um, it says the breakout room it. is open, but it didn't pop up with a button. It just had a it didn't. Pop. Okay, yeah. okay, let me see. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, let me go back and see what my settings are. <clears throat> oh man. Why something's not right here. What is it? Let's see. That's all right. Head and head body and body and HTML. Oh, I see what I did. Run it back out. Who is that? Okay, I'm all set, Dana. I just figured it out. Um, the little things are the things that can throw everything out the window. Um, I was missing one little um, forward slash. Oh, okay then. And so it all shows up. So I'm good. <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank it you. says Corey Hudson not joined. Maybe I need to go in there. Um, all right, let me try this. So I'm not in the breakout room, right? Because I'm not hearing um, Caitlin. I'm not saying anything right now. Oh, okay. I thought you were moving forward with, okay. So I was going to, but I didn't want to talk over people. So I was just waiting. You're so polite. You yeah. have power, you know, as a teacher. <sighs> yeah, it's those little things. Mm -hmm. They're important. So, um, okay. So we have a nav bar. Um, we're gonna use this 
um, in our code. Um, and if you scroll down, you see like how they um, utilize this. Um, and so you can, so this nav bar is just like what the nav bar looks like. This is how they style the nav bar. And then um, there's the, there's the expand on large. Um, all that means is that when there's, you're on a large screen, this nav bar um, is, it, is, is full. Um, and then nav bar light, this light is just the style. This can be dark as well. And that's the one that I use. And so- Caitlin, okay, I don't mm -hmm. mean to interrupt you, but um, I wanna make sure I'm in the right part of that um, bootstrap page because I'm not seeing the nav bar part. If you're in docs and yeah. then you go to, if you, yep. And then you, on the left-hand side, there's all these uh, drop downs. You go to components and you find nav bar. And so you go to docs for, oh, there it is, the nav bar up there. So docs, and then it should show, there should be a lot, there should be components on the left. Oh, they're not really in alpha order, are they? Components. Um, All right. So I open that one up and then I pick nav. nav bar, not nav and tabs, nav bar. Okay, great. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And so um, here's some like brief information. So the nav bar, basically um, you this nav, you have to wrap in something else. So for the actual navigation to work properly with Bootstrap, you need to wrap it in this nav bar um, class. And then they have these kind of like breakpoints here. This is what makes it responsive for collapsing. Um, and so what I did was I used this uh, large breakpoint here so that when we go down to iPad and mobile, it collapses that navigation into that hamburger. Um, okay, we're only seeing the page. We're not seeing what you're actually doing. It, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, we're just seeing it's, the- um, It's on the screen. You can scroll up or down. She's in supported content. Oh, she's still on the Bootstrap page. I thought she was showing us the responsiveness of something she'd coded. Okay. Oh, no. Gotcha. So, so in my code, I'm going to copy this first line because there's a lot of classes here. And I'm going to go uh, back to my Visual Studio code and I'm going to put that inside my header here. And then I'm going to close my nav tag. And I'm just going to write nav inside for now. And so you should have the nav bar class, which is basically a wrapper. Okay. Yeah. You should have this nav bar expand LG, which means large. And then um, you can experiment with this later if you want. If you want to make this a medium breakpoint, a small breakpoint, an XL breakpoint, um, you can mess with these kinds of classes later. And the Bootstrap documentation is extensive. So if you are really curious, like how things work and how they're styling these, you can dive into that. Um, and then the nav bar light is a styling. Um, so you can change this to be dark you can save that and if i go back to my chrome and i go to my document and refresh i have this dark nav bar here so what's the bg if the lg is large uh background background oh yeah okay yeah and so <laughs> and so that's a good question and so on the boot i'm constantly going to these bootstrap documentation guides because mm -hmm. sometimes I don't remember what they all mean because there's so many classes. And so if you feel like you can't remember them all, you don't have to, you don't have to memorize them at all. Um, their documentation is great. Um, and I just have to remember where stuff is. So a nav bar um, is the same as a wrapper, but in Bootstrap, you would not use the word wrapper? Yeah, you don't need to, because they have classes. Right. So here's, okay. here's the BG. So I'm in utilities on the bootstrap documentation. Mm. And if I click on background, you see BG primary, BG secondary. Um, you can use all these classes here if you want. I could make it a warning, I can make it success. Um, and they're just named that because these are like colors that are typically used for those things. 
Do they have green? You usually see like a, if you do like a button, you'd see like a green (laughs) button. If, if you were doing something like positive and like, this is where I don't remember who was saying it, but like red was danger, right? Like remember Dana had her project and she got in trouble for using red. Um, and so that's why they label this be, like danger is this, this color class that they use um, in bootstrap. Um, mm-hmm. So that's where, that's where that BG comes from. So we can pick what we want then? In the nav bar. Yeah, I did light, I, I did dark. Um, it doesn't matter, it's, it's up to you. Was that on the same page or do you have to get it from a side menu? Uh, what do you mean? The colors. The colors, yeah. So that was in a different menu. It was in um, okay. utilities Great. on Thank the group and background. I would just stick to the light and dark for now for, for the sake of time. But if you want to mess with it, that's where you would find this in, in the utility section on Bootstrap. Um, they have flex classes. We're going to use some of these. Um, they look like this. You can do that. You can do flex direction. Um, so we'll get into that. So the next thing we need in our nav bar is um, the way that it works. They have their contents are fluid by default. So you can change the container that's that's inside the nav bar to something else. Um, I kept it as fluid because that means it's going to take up the whole width of the screen, no matter what device I'm on. And so I want that nav bar to span across the top of my page all the time, no matter how big or small my device is. So I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio Code and in my nav element here that I added classes to, I'm gonna say container. And um, this is a shortcut. I'm gonna show you if you have shortcuts. Oh wait, sorry, I need a div dot, my bad. Um, And then container dash, fluid and I can press enter and it creates that div with the class name for with the class for me. Um, yeah, so I can do that again. If you don't have the shortcuts, I really want you guys to get shortcuts because it's easy, but I also want you to type it out. So I'm going to type, I'm going to show you the shortcut one more time and then I'll type it out for you. So I can do div and then just like you target a class in CSS, I can do a dot and then I can type the class name that I want to give this element and then I can press enter and it creates the div with the class. Mm. Um, And then I will just type this out for you guys also. So I'm going to open it, type div space. Then I'm going to do class equals. And I'm going to put my quotes and I'm going to type container dash fluid because that's the bootstrap class that I want that's gonna allow my navigation bar to expand the width of the whole page at the top. I'm gonna close that. And then I'm gonna do my closing div tag. You're missing an S. I, hmm? <laughs> On class, you need an S. Oh my gosh, thanks. <laughs> I wanna figure that out eventually when it didn't work. <laughs> yep. um, that's why I do shortcuts because I always type things wrong. So. so the other way was dot container or nav dot nav container show it again yep, you can do div whatever element you're using so i could do h2 dot dot text and it would apply an h2 tag with with a class of text oh my god that's so handy it's so cool so what i actually did though was div dot and then i used that bootstrap class um here container fluid yep so i can do container dash fluid and enter and it it does that for me Ah. so then i don't have any typos i'm not missing a closing tag i'm not missing a quotation mark um because i do that more often than i'd like to tell you um and it drives me insane so um it's good to know how to type it all out and to get used to using the special characters and stuff but um but yeah that's a handy little trick um and then so inside my Mm. nav bar my navigation 
I also have a link with a brand and that's that um, C2, well, oh, wrong one, sorry. That's that C2 right here that I just used the nav bar brand. Um, you can replace that with an image if you want, um, but it's styled as a, as a brand logo. Um, so I'm gonna do, um, let me show you the documentation. So nav bar brand um, is this, it's a link usually. Um, this could be, you could put an, uh, like an image inside this A tag um, instead, and it could be like your company logo or whatever. Um, but they just put nav bar here for the sake of simplicity. Um, but this is like a clickable logo. And what you could do is you could make this href an actual link and it would bring you back to the home page, right? Or, uh, and that's usually what it does on like a website, right? So this um, hashtag here is just a, it's just a placeholder. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, if you ever see that inside of like a link uh, attribute. Excuse me, Caitlin. Is that what yeah. they call a dead link? Yes. Yep. It's a dead link. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere, but it also doesn't hurt anything right now. Um, it's just a placeholder. So it doesn't throw an error and say like it's empty. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Caitlin, the type is still really small. And oh, I that's okay. I know you can't judge, but I've got like four different windows all next to each other. And, and when I try to make better? it bigger, it doesn't help either. So do you want can, me to can, can someone send that URL of that website and I can pull it up my on my screen right where she is in um, Git Bootstrap? Can I get that URL in the, in the um, chat? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Caitlin. You're welcome. I'll just point. I'm nearsighted anyway, so I'll just get real <laughs> close to the screen. See how close I am? I'm doing the same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's creepy. So navbar brand can be applied to most elements, but the anchor works best. So just saying like you can use navbar brand on a div, you can use it on an image, um, but using it on an anchor tag is the best way to use that class. Um, and some elements, it's just because they have maybe like different styling, but you, so you might need to like adjust the styling if you use a different type of tag. So that's why this nav bar brand class is on an A tag here um, because that's just the way that they say it works best. So um, I'm gonna do A and I'm gonna give it the class that is nav bar dash brand. And hopefully I typed that. I didn't type it right. I missed the other S again. <laughs> and then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to give it an href. And I'm just going to say like, whatever. It's a, I'm going to fill it with that. Um, and I'm going to make my logo um, C2. And I'm going to close my A tag. And I'm going to save. I'm gonna go back. Equals A. Oop, sorry, hold on, Corey. And there's my brand logo shows up in the corner. Mine's outside, I did something wrong. Yep. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the nesting of my elements, I have like my nav, I have the div here, but my A tag is inside this container div. So make sure your A tag is inside here and that your div is inside oh. your nav. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I don't have the, the nav is what's missing. Okay. Yep. You put a pound after each ref. It is. Yep. Path. That's just the placeholder, Corey. It's just like a broken link, basically. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's not broken. It's dead, like Will Tony said. <laughs> and that's C2? Yep. You can make that whatever you want. You oh. can put, the, put your name there. You can put whatever you want there. And it'll it should show up in the top left corner of your page if you refresh if you save your code and refresh the page can you go back to your um index html please yep so we would need to target that nav bar brand and make the text in it white or some lighter color if we wanted it to show up better right yeah um i think this mine's black and it's barely legible. <laughs> I wonder why it's black. So mine's blue and I also can't get it into the nav bar 
But also, mine's not as thick as yours. Um, like the black line at the top is not. Do you as guys thick have stuff in your um style that CSS by any chance? Do you have that linked? Oh shoot! There it is. Yeah, I have the style oh, CSS. Okay. <clears throat> Is it does it have stuff in it? Because that would that could be affecting um how it looks. So you wanted us to delete all that. Um you could just unlink it for now if you wanted. How do I do that? Just right click. Don't see it. How do I do that? Um well if you have it linked in in the top part of your HTML file. Oh, in, in the head? One. Yeah. Art? Yeah, but I'm only talking about if you have the style.css, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have style.css linked in my index HTML. What do you have for um, your styles on your nav? Like, nothing. I have normalized CSS in there. <clears throat> No, like in your nav element, what classes do you have on your nav element? Oh, the nav bar, expand large, L, large, nav bar, dark, background dark. In Is your nav. index HTML saved? It, yes. it, okay, the, the, so that the circle next to the... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I command F, I know how to save it. Okay, all right then. Yep, just double checking. Hmm. That was my mistake <laughs> earlier. That that that's why I was double checking. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because some people thought that they had saved and they actually hadn't. It could have been that they clicked on something else when they hit Command S. Yeah, and and oh. didn't realize. Yeah, so if your screen focuses, so that, that's the other thing. If if you're saving, but you if you're if you've clicked like onto a web page or something and you haven't click back into VS Code, you're, you have to actually click back into VS Code and then save and hit that Command S because if you click somewhere else and hit Command S, you haven't saved in VS Code, you've saved someplace outside of it. Mm -hmm. So that I just <laughs> fixed the dark type by changing, I didn't realize I had navbar light BG dark so I changed oh. the nav bar dark. So that's like a that's pulling in some CSS. That nav bar dark is like a a grouping of of CSS that's changing the text color and other things. Yeah. So this nav bar dark and background dark, those are both affecting the way the nav bar is looking like color wise. So I, if I made these light, um, yeah. Um, then it's definitely going to show up different. And the reason is, I think the, um, I have to check the documentation, but I think your problem was, so see how this is like light gray now yeah. with the black text. Um, if I change, um, oops, sorry. If, if I change uh, this background back to dark, the background is affecting the background color of the nav bar. And so that's going to show up as dark. But then, um, my text is still going to be like from the light mode. And so it's going to show up oh. as dark because oh, this text should that. be dark on a light background. Mm -hmm. So those two classes, I, those two classes should match. So you shouldn't have like light, a light nav bar class and a dark background class. They should match dark, dark or light, light. So it's totally your preference. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but they should match here. Yeah, I just didn't catch that you changed it in two places when we oh, were playing with the color. So I'm sorry. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's okay. That was I'm glad that you kind of ran into that error because uh, that's that was a good talking point to make sure that um, clarify what those are doing. I should say. So it looks like um, um, that Bootstrap gave something like presets with when that with that nav class line. When you hit dark, dark, they come with presets for the font color and the background. Yeah, so that's what Bootstrap is doing. Bootstrap is just basically a bunch of CSS that helps you style your HTML a lot faster. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Got um, it. And they do have some JavaScript too. And we're going to import a script uh, file from them just to get the nav bar collapse to work properly. Um, how, do, how do, if we wanted to edit the font of the nav class, the color of the letters mm -hmm. 
uh, how would we, we, is that where we would do it? Nav class? Yeah. So you could do in your style.css. Uh, I could target this uh, nav bar dark. Nav bar. Oh, sorry. I need a dot. Nav bar dash dark. I can target that same class and I can say I want the color of the text to be pink. Yeah. And yeah. I can save that. And then I, you have to make sure your style sheet is linked after uh, your bootstrap style sheet. And after the bootstrap. Save that. Yeah, because you're going to override bootstrap. Right. This day. right. And then I'm going to refresh. And that didn't work for some reason. Uh, and you saved. I'm. But Mm -hmm. it should work um so how do i get so i don't know what's going on my c2 is blue i didn't change the font color or anything it and it's outside of the nav bar i don't have I anything think it in my did style work. it's just very pale pink it very could pink. be yeah sorry alina what was that um so I don't have anything in my style.css. My normalize is what we copied and pasted. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't understand what's going on. Like I didn't change the font color or anything, but my C2 is blue. Is it and underlined? Then... No. Do oh, you have... it, it clicks on a link or something. Do you have the class on the A tag that says navbar dash brand? Navbar. Yes, I do have. The, what did you ask? Do I have the link on it? Just the class with the you have. Yeah, it says I, I copied and pasted it from Bootstrap. It says, yeah, it looks exactly like yours. Um. OK, I only was asking because um like links are blue by default. But I wasn't sure if you had the class applied. Yeah, no, I'm wrong. That's I don't know weird. what's going on. But I also can't get my C2 inside of the nav bar and it's not as thick as yours either. Are you in the div? Yep. Because I, I had that I'm outside, I didn't have a closing div, out, and then I fixed it, and it came back because I was no. Nope. Yeah, my my code looks exactly like Caitlin's. Like I'm in the div, I lined it up just like hers and everything. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Maybe I can look at it when we take a break, if you want. Okay. Um. Sorry, I don't want to take up time from class. I'll just try to figure it out. Okay. If you going. if you. If it keeps causing like compounding problems, then we can look at it. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna take like 10 more minutes probably, and then we'll let you guys have a break. Um, Cause it is like 7.15, but we're gonna do the open hack at eight o'clock. So I wanted to get as far as we could before break. Um, so we don't have to like come back afterwards. Um, so after this, um, we're gonna do a button. Um, and so this button is just going to be um, when I, and expanding and um or when i'm sorry using on, on a mobile device this is going to be the button and we have to tell um our html that like when the nav collapses we want this button to show up and when i click this button i want these links to show up inside of it and so um the way we're going to do that is in bootstrap they have this button here with a class of navbar toggler. All that means is that um, it's going to take this when when it collapses, it's going to toggle the navbar to be this this icon here, and they put the icon in a span tag. And so that icon is actually a font, probably um, like a there's places on the on the web like font awesome where you can grab icons that are that act as fonts and so you can style them as fonts um and it's like what a lot of companies will use as their icons because they're much easier to uh use than images um so instead of using an image of a hamburger uh menu you would use this font and it's much more like dynamic and it can expand and contract and it, it still looks nice um and it's not going to look weird and you don't have to like worry about having a transparent background and all those kinds of things. So it's treated as a font. Um, and so I'm gonna copy this here. This Is that one of those UTF-8 things? Um, it would be able to be read by it, yeah. But it's um, technically, so font awesome. 
That's okay. I don't want to take up too much time. I just was curious. That's fine. I'm just going to like show you. Font Awesome is literally just like, it's like someone created a font that's all icons, like wingdings. Like it, it just looks like little images, all these. And so oh, these are, useful. yeah. And so you see them all over the place. Like there's an Amazon one. There's like, I mean, there's like tons of, oh. of icons. Um, and so it's just like something you can import. If we have time, like on Thursday, I'll try to show you how to use this as well. Um, but if not, um, you know, somebody else I'm sure will show it to you at some point um, during the cohort because it's super useful. Um, and it makes your like code look like clean and nice and like professional. You have all these cool like icons and nice looking sites. So, um, so I just copied this from the opening button tag to the closing button tag with the span inside. Um, and I'm going to put that still inside my div, but under the link. Under A class, yep. And this target here is going to change. I know. Um, and I'll explain why, but I'm just going to put a. <sighs> Oh, I messed something up here. Mm. All right, I'm just gonna keep this. Uh... Oh my God. I want these to be on separate lines so you guys- Is can there a see. way to do that automatically? Like mine is going all the way to the right or do <laughs> yeah. I have to do it by hand? Yeah, when I save it, my formatter does it for me, but it's just super annoying. Um, I want to get you guys um, the formatter that I have called Prettier. I want you guys to start using that because it just makes your life easier. Yeah, um, it's better. It's easier to see. I'm gonna make a yeah. I'm gonna make a no. It is. It's a lot easier. I'm gonna make a no. Actually, there's that. Um, I'm gonna do font awesome and Prettier. And I think you guys need the, the icons for VS Code if you don't already have them, yeah. like the file icons and stuff. And so we there. can we can do that Thursday as like a catch up like maintenance type day if you want. Um, I think that'd be super helpful going forward as well. So thank you. So um, I changed this to just the hashtag. Hashtag this data dash BS. It's not not real BS. It's just Bootstrap, <laughs> and then. Uh, target. Um, this is this is just saying like it's going to target a specific element that's going to have an ID, um, and um, this is where we're going to need some JavaScript imported. Um, and I will show you on Bootstrap where to get the JavaScript link or script tag. Um, it's Um, so I'm going to, in the introduction part of the bootstrap documentation under getting started, um, right under CSS, there's a JS section. Um, and it just says, you know, obviously some of their components use JavaScript to function. So that hamburger menu needs some JavaScript to tell it when to open and close. Um, and so we're gonna grab this. I want to bundle it. I don't want the separate parts because um, that just is complicated and we don't need this whole thing, but it's just a lot easier to have the one script tag. So I'm gonna copy this um, and you will start JavaScript next week, but the script tag is gonna go all the way right before at the the body, the closing body tag at the bottom of my HTML file. Um, and the reason for that, and Max will explain this to you a lot better next week, but the reason for that 
is that you don't want this JavaScript to try to do anything until your entire page is loaded. Otherwise, if something on your page doesn't load, this JavaScript is going to throw errors and your page might not load at all. Um, and, and that's not good. So your script tags should be at the bottom of the page. There are some times, I believe, where you might want them at the top, but Max can better clarify that. Um, but generally speaking, these script tags should be at the bottom. And um, I will go back to Bootstrap and show you where that is, just in case. Mm -hmm. So it's right under the CSS section that we got the link tag from. And it's under JS and the, oh, the page. I can actually click this and copy that and put it in chat. And you want that pasted before the last body tag? Correct. Right? Yep. Right before okay. your closing body tag. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. getting that from the bootstrap site, the script. Is that right? Yep. I put the link in the chat to you to help you. Oh, okay. You great. Thank you. Bring it right there. You're welcome. And we put it after the end body and end HTML or before the, oh, between the right body? before your closing body tag. Okay, so still in the body. Okay. Where's the link? Here it is. Great. Yep. And if you didn't know that, um, it actually tells you up here in the JS section. So if you had no idea where to put this, it says place one of the following scripts near the end of your page right before the closing body tag. Mm -hmm. Were we so, supposed to have read through the Bootstrap documentation website before class? No. Oh, okay, good. No. <laughs> it was not is not an assignment. Um, I probably okay. should have made that some sort of weekend assignment just to browse through it. But um, yep. we're supposed to do the free code or the whichever one. Yeah, camp. I probably should have done this one first and then free code camp. So no, that's yeah. good as long as I'm not missing several beats. All right. No, you're fine. And the um, script should be um, indented like the span and the anchor class. Yeah, it'll, it will probably just it'll it'll. It doesn't matter too much down here. Um, okay. Yeah. There and that and then some of the other stuff you were doing. I'm gonna have. I made a comment. I put a comment in to go back and and drop it in like the um, aria and all that stuff. Oh yeah. That's okay to wait, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we have the the videos for. All right. Thank you. I can't copy from your screen. <laughs> it's like all right. That's okay. And that goes right. just above the closing body tag. Correct. Uh -oh. What did you just do? All right. So the last thing I want to do before um, we take we we break um, for the night is um, after this button tag, um, I want to add our links in here. Um, I want to get our navigation finished. So what yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to make a I'm going to do a div. Uh, it didn't close it for me. Um, and in that div, I'm going to give it classes. And I'm going to give it a couple classes. So uh, one of the classes I'm going to give it is, I just keep going back to this so I can kind of like show you why I'm using these classes. Um, so Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. <laughs> um, so this div is going to collapse, and it's going to be it's going to uh, be a nav bar that collapses, and it's going to have an ID, and this is the ID that I was talking about that we need the JavaScript for. And so I'm going to give it a class of nav bar dash collapse and then another class that's just collapse and then i'm going to give it an id of main nav and then this id here that i said main nav i'm also going to use this hashtag here and the hashtag is used why There, it's linking it's together. D. It's dead. 
Yeah, yeah. it's linking together and it's an oh. ID. Um, and so I'm gonna say uh, main nav. These, this target and this ID have to be the same or this won't work. Um, and so what this is doing is this button is targeting this, this div, this div that we just created that's gonna have our links in it. Okay. And this div is gonna collapse and then this button is gonna show up with this icon and this button is going to be able to expand that div for us. That's basically how that's gonna work. How do you how do you get your no, it's that program you have to make your text wrap. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then inside my div, I'm gonna stay on VS Code. So if you guys are still going, I'm gonna just stay here for a second. But I'm going to do an unordered list, and Dana's going to hate me for it. But the link order doesn't matter. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's just going to be the way the links are. Um, and I'm going to do a list item. And it's going to have a link inside of it. And then I'm going to copy this list item that I just did two more times because we have three links in our navigation. And then this uh, unordered list is going to get a class that is equal to navbar dash nav. And all that's doing is styling this list of links as a navigation list. And so it's going to uh, style those the way that a navigation should look. And then each list item. Li tag is going to have a class that's going to say nav dash item. Super intuitive, right? Makes sense. This is our nav item. And then our links are going to have class that are, let's say, <clears throat> nav dash link. And so I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of these link items. I'm gonna give it a class equals navbar dash nav. And then again, they give my uh, links a class. Nav dash link. Oh, sorry, this is not navbar nav, this is nav item. And then inside my link tags, I'm gonna say home. I'm gonna I'm gonna call the middle one search, and I'm gonna call this one cart. And the reason I'm doing that is because hopefully by the end of the week, um, and you guys will be able to finish for homework is you're gonna link these links to the actual other pages that we're going to add to this project, um, which would be the search page and the cart page. Ellen, do you just mind zooming into your code really quick? Yep. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. These are coming up on the left. 
in the nav bar in uh, mm -hmm. Chrome because we haven't done any styling to center them, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. They will show up on the left for now. We're going to do that in one second. It's just another class. Um, if you want to see if you can figure out what class to add, um, you are going to add it to the div um, that has the class navbar dash collapse. You're going to add a class to that. So if you want to go and try to figure out what class you need to add to make it centered, um, you can go ahead and try that out. Okay. Yeah. I'm also just figuring out like <laughs> what's included in bootstrap and what is separate styling that we're doing. So. Yeah, yep. It's 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 a big learning curve. Um, it's definitely easy to get up and going, but then there's a lot to uh, customize um, your code. So. So it's an unordered list now. Uh, <clears throat> goals. Left bar. Dash man. So if you get um, one of these list items done, um, Corey and everybody else, um, you can just copy this and paste it two more times um, if you want. Um, but I, I like to practice, I want you guys to practice um, typing things out if you can, but um, to save time, you could just copy one and paste it two more times. Got it. <clears throat> um, and I'm gonna switch over really quick, Corey, one second. Um, and so these links are showing up here because like uh, Kyle said, we haven't, we haven't done anything with them yet to make them. Right. I think I'm getting, and I'll take a shot at um, the class. I thought there's a class that says center. Is that right or no? Yeah, so there is a center class. Um, I'm gonna use a flex property mm -hmm. um, just to show you guys how flex works with bootstrap. And so, um, on this div, this nav navbar um, collapse div, um, I'm gonna um, give this a class, and uh, Bootstrap has flex properties that are already classed for you. So, um, oh, um, so if I go here in the Bootstrap documentation, I go to utilities, and I go to flex. It tells me all the classes I can use to do the different, to, to, to use different flex properties. So I can use flex column, I can use flex row. Um, but what I want is I want justify content and I want to use justify dash content dash center. Oh, uh -huh. and okay. so I'm going to do a justify dash content dash center. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back. I'm going to refresh and there they are. Got it. Can you go back to that um, VS Code page? Yep. Okay, catch up. US. Class. Snap bar. Close it. Oh, get the slash though. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And if you have this, um, let me just double check. We kind of like have tied up this section. Uh, yeah. So if you have this code here um, and you have your closing nav, your closing header and all your divs and um, elements are closed, um, then we're done with that top part of the page. So if you go to your page, um, and you open your inspect, you should be able to collapse your page and have the hamburger pop up. And if you imported that script tag, um, it's gonna show up. Now the links are not showing up underneath here. And that's because I forgot to tell you to add another class somewhere. And I'm trying to remember which one it was. Oh, I styled it in the style.css file. So we'll get to that. Um, so I have a question. Um, is there a reason why I can't open dev tools on mine? On your Chrome? Yeah. Mm. Oh, because I'm using Safari. That's why. Never mind. Oh, I was like, you should be able to. 
Uh, so and I, I did it and I got the home search cart, but now that I'm in the dev tools, I, for some reason, I don't see them, but I do see the little hamburger lines. Do you Where click the ham? Did you click the hamburger? No. Oh, is that how you do it? Yep. Oh, it worked. That's, that's the button with the JavaScript. It's magic. Oh, I didn't realize you could click on things there. Oh, yeah. That's cool. It is cool. I love it. <laughs> That's so amazing. that's the JavaScript magic. Without the JavaScript, you could click this button all day and it wouldn't open anything. It would just be annoying. And um, yeah. Can you go back to your code? I'm not sure what I did. My button isn't popping up. Yep. Um, let me try to find where it is. There you are. <clears throat> one second. So the, the one thing that I dislike about Bootstrap is that there's so many classes that you kind of get lost looking at what's where um and so it can get kind of like overwhelming to look at all the classes you have applied to different elements um so that's like one downside of using a lot of bootstrap when we were in the nav bar part of mm -hmm. bootstrap and there and we're taking this stuff like the nav bar class and the is this that's one whole section of code that they're giving as an example of what is shown at the top right there, like their page with the nav bar home link drop down. That's yes. code, and that would give us that if we just straight copied it. Yes, correct. So, and, how, like, so you're like cherry picking stuff. Like how yeah. do you even seem so overwhelming to go through and know what <laughs> you need to pick out? It's extremely overwhelming. <laughs> um, I, I tend to go for like the simplest thing. Um, sorry, Alina, do you need me to go back still? I'm sorry. Go ahead and you can continue talking. I'm, I'm going to save this and see if it worked. Um, I tend to go for like the simplest parts. And so um, see if I can find. So here's like a basic nav. Um, and, and as you get used to it, you'll understand like they have this other th this other class applied to the first link. That just shows like if it's an active link, that's what it looks like. Um, and then there's like this disabled link like, oh, I can't click this because this is disabled. Um, and that's just like a separate class you can apply. Um, and so like, I don't typically copy all of this, but if I, like when I first started using Bootstrap, I did, I just copied all this and put it somewhere and messed around with it. Like I deleted stuff and tried to see what would happen. Um, I added things to see what would happen. I, you know, it's just kind of like experimental, but, um, I mean, their documentation is, it's pretty, it's really good actually. I've seen some documentation that's extremely hard to follow. Um, but like this right here, like it's just written, a lot of it's written in such plain English that you can kind of figure it out as you go. Um, the more you mess with it, the easier it gets to know like what you really need and what you don't. Um, yeah. But it is it is really overwhelming. Like you look at this and you're like, oh my God, there's a search, there's a drop down link list. There's like all kinds of stuff here. Like I don't know what this is doing. There's so much code here and so many classes. And so it does get like extremely overwhelming. So like in theory though, not us, cause we want to learn, but if you wanted to be like, I'm going to make a web page, you could just come in here, copy this, drop it in. And oh yeah. So yeah. you don't really have to sit around coding. You can just sort of cobble things together by using already written code. Yeah, you could. Um, and the one downside to that is that if it breaks, you have no idea what you're doing. Um, right. And so <laughs> Right. And so that's your cold please while you guys are talking sorry to cut you yeah. off yeah yep um and so like if you you know it's nice when you're getting started because like i said you can kind of experiment and and one of the homework assignments i'm going to give you i'm going to assign it for tomorrow um or not for tomorrow but like i'm going to assign it tomorrow is that um i want you to like pick some uh some components from bootstrap and just like make like a simple, like fun, like whatever page, like an HTML page, you can link to another page if you want to get fancy. Um, and just like a, put some components on there, style them differently, try to like mess with them. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like try to have fun with it and see, uh, practice linking the bootstrap style sheet um, and, and practice using some of those classes and components because the more that you use them, the more intuitive they get. And you'll you'll remember like, oh, I need to make this a container fluid. Um, I need to, I can add this flex class and it's gonna do what I want um, and that kind of stuff. And that's really like the beauty of Bootstrap um, is that you have a lot of things that are pre-styled for you and then you can 
um, just kind of make your own using your style sheet if you want. Um, so that's going to be like a, an easy assignment. That's kind of like, uh, it doesn't have to, there's no like structure. I'm not going to give you like a structure. You can make it so you can practice doing part of your capstone if you want. Um, but like, just use like three of the components, put them on a page um, and, and mess around with them a little bit. Great. That sounds great. Cause I yeah. mean, I, I follow along in class, but then sometimes outside of class on my own, it's like, Oh, I don't know. And I don't want to break something, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is like a good way to just kind of like mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Corey, I see your hand is raised. Do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, um, as I was look, uh, getting through the code here, mm -hmm. I knew that one, I think under buttons, one of the buttons you had linked something, you you connected the title to something. Oh, right? yes. Uh, you're right. I connected this, this target, data-bs-target. I, I used, uh, sorry this um, ID symbol, this hashtag and main with a camel case and main nav. And I used this same ID down here. See how I highlight this main nav and it highlights where else it is in my file. Oh, there it is. Yep. Main yep. Nav. So that yep. came from us getting some out of bootstrap. Yeah. So and then copy it up top to the BS target. Correct. Yeah. So you want you want the target to have the hashtag in it, but the ID doesn't need the hashtag. Got it. it. The, the the hashtag up here just saying like target this ID. Um, that's called main nav. Main nav. And because IDs are specific and you should only use them once, that's how it knows what to target. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I have a, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yes, Kyle. Yeah, I just had like a question or maybe something kind of table for the beginning of the next class. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to play around, like you said, and try to center the links on my own um, before you had showed us that flex capability in Bootstrap, the Justify Content Center. And I was just um, setting it like the alignment here. I, I can, let me check with it. Like um, navbar collapse, targeting that one and doing text align center. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually, now I did the way that you suggested, but um, I, just to check it again to see if it was working, I changed it to text align left because the my personal style sheet is the third one on there after normalize and after bootstrap. So it should override them and it's not affecting it. So I remember you were having that problem where you couldn't turn the C2 pink. Maybe we both have a problem linking our yeah, that's, or something. That's, that's kind of funny. Um, I don't know if the text align work doesn't work because they're um it's a list item and they're um link tags in there so it's it's not like text text like these are like um other elements okay does that make sense but um well, it could just be it could be related to the same issue i was, I was having yeah, because I actually tried to change the color as well, and I wasn't able to do it. I changed it to like a really different color, like a dark yeah. purple, and it wasn't showing up. And I tried targeting several different things in there. I forgot what you targeted, but I tried targeting like several other things that the C2 was within, and it didn't change it either. And, and, and so, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'm going to mess with it and see where I can come up. But it, the other thing you can do is you can always add your own class here, and then you can target your own class. Um, and, and that might. Okay. I'll that try might, that too. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. So um, I hate to cut people off, but um, I am going to give you guys a break. Um, if you don't want to take a break, that's fine. I want to give you a break. And um, the link for the meetup is in um, Slack in the student channel. I can post it again if it kind of got lost in the sauce with all the stuff that we've been uh, talking about and posting. Um, but the meetup starts at eight o'clock. And if you click on the meetup, uh, link that's in Slack. Um, the Zoom link is also there. Um, and I will be there as well, obviously. And I will introduce uh, you all as like cohort two students of Careers and Code. And then um, hopefully you guys will have fun there um, until whenever. The meetup does go past class time, but you do not have to stay past class time if you don't want to. Um, so just a heads up there. So if you want to take your break, go ahead. And if you uh, need help and want to stay on, I will be here. Can you push your code down to the uh, lists? Yes. Alina, yes, you can share your screen. Uh, and just I'll wait until you're done with Corey. 
Yeah, like, sorry. Like code. I don't know. I just no, no. You go I, first, Nalina. Go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's a problem because I can't get my button to um pop up, but my code looks like Caitlin's from what I can see. I don't know if I have a syntax error that I'm not seeing or something. You go and... first. Go for it. No, no. Go go ahead because you're looking at the code and everything. Corey, if you <laughs> if you want to open your classroom code base in a different VS Code window, you could look at the code there. But if that's too confusing, then oh no, yeah, no, that's a good shortcut. I caught it. Thank you. But, but this is all the same in there too. Same so if thing. you just need to look right. at the section, you can do that. Can do that. Thank you. Okay, okay I'm going to share my screen. Okay, let me stop. While she's sharing her screen, um, did you? I know that in the last cohort, sometimes they would copy and paste finished code right into Slack even though it was also available in yeah. GitHub? Is that something that you, you want to do? I can do that. I can copy okay. and paste what we, what we completed for tonight. Right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I think that would make it a little more convenient. Yeah, sure. Thank you for the suggestion. I forgot okay. about that. Mm -hmm. I was always asking for that. You They'd were, like, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you kept, you, kept <laughs> them all, you kept them all on their toes. <laughs> you kept them in check. You, you know why? Because we... I had so, so many problems with GitHub, like it, it wasn't covered the same way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that was, that was my work around until um, we could work out the kinks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave the meeting really quick because I have to leave the meeting to share my. Screen. Oh, your settings. Yeah. Okay. I'll let really you back really in. Dumb, or but, you <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to take a break until we all um, hop yeah. into the, the meetup. All Feel right. Free. All right. See, see you over on the other side. Bye bye. Yeah, I'll see you there. Bye okay, bye bye. <laughs> Caitlin, just real quick. Um, I learned that you can use defer, D E F E R, after your JavaScript. You can put it in the top. I'm just wondering where, where would I put it if I use that? That's a good question. Let me look that up really quick. Um, I don't, I don't, it's funny, like, I, I probably have done that before, but, but I feel like I don't use it in my day-to-day -day job that I would yeah. that I know off the top of my head. So, um, let me look. Oh yeah. So you, you could, um, you just type it in the, in the script tag. And it would go after normalized after the double quotes at the end of, um, so I mean, anonymous, the last part of anonymous, it would just say defer after that, not in the double quotes, just outside of it. Yeah, so I'm looking, so you can put defer attribute as a Boolean after and present specifies the script that's executing the previous change placement. Defer attribute is only for external scripts. Mm. Yeah. So, so what you would do, I'll share my screen really quick. Thanks. Yep. Um, I believe what you could do is you could copy this. I, what is this? Um, copy that and delete it real quick. And then I'm going to go up here. I'm going to link it last. OK, so after the CSS style. Yep, and then I'm just going to type defer here. And then it tells you what it does. If you type that in, it'll say, like, this is a Boolean attribute. It's set to indicate to a browser the script is meant to be executed after the document has been parsed but before firing. So um, as long as your HTML is loading OK, then the script will fire. OK. Um, and oh. it was after anonymous. Okay. Yep. And so you could just stick that right at the end. And um, then if I reload my page, uh, maybe maybe my computer hates me today. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. If I reload my page here, Everything should still work the same. So. Yeah, mine looks exactly the same, all the buttons and stuff. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the only way you would know if you had an issue anyway was if your HTML didn't load correctly for some reason. And okay. so you'd have to like break it on purpose to really test that out. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I think I think that's like a solid way to put it up top. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Alina, you're back.
Okay. I think you're also muted. Thanks, host, because I couldn't find that. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Do you see my error whatsoever? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be something syntax, but I don't know. I like looked at yours like 87 times. And my eyeballs don't see it, so I don't know. Oh, uh, okay, hold on. So, your collapse, uh, your collapse doesn't have a, sec a second L. Oh, that might be why. Um, let me just keep looking, see if there's anything else. Oops, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Um, Put the, just to make sure, put the um, hashtags in the hrefs of the link tags. Like. In between the quotations. Like right here. Yeah, in the empty quotations. Oh, okay. Just put a hashtag in all of those just to make sure. All right. Um. Yeah, I still have no button. And then try to, yeah, you have to, so try to collapse the um, window. So drag it like Where? from the side, make it look like a, like a phone, like drag it to make the window smaller. Resize it to make it. Okay, I'm picking up. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. So now click the button and make sure the button works. All right. So nothing's happening. So. It's broken. That means me now. Me now. I think you're missing a closing div tag. Um, right before, right after the UL closing tag, right where your mouse just was. Right here. Yeah, but you need a, you need another oh. one. Oh, oh, two of them. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, nope. That's good. Oh. Well. All right. Save that. And, and S. Go over here. Refresh. Click on this. <sighs> Still not working. Hmm. Sorry. You see, I was stumped. I'm stumped too. Hold on. Sorry, I'm like mad close to the screen because I'm. <laughs> no, it's cool. Like I was mad close to the screen because like well, after you look at the code for so long, you're just like lo looking at all the letters and everything. It's yeah. Like, oh, wait, hold on. I need to be like this close to see which line I'm on. <laughs> um, let me pull my code up really quick. Let's see. Yeah, bar collapse, collapse, we're stuck on the center. ID main nav, target, equal, ID main nav. Uh, go down to your script tag. Oh. Can you go back to Bootstrap and Go get that um, JavaScript tag again. Okay. It, might, it, might, it might be the wrong. Um, so we're going to go. It might have got messed up. Where was it? That was in the top. Introduction. Down. Just go down a little bit. We're going to do the bundle one, right? Yep. Just copy, copy that whole thing and then replace the one that you have at the bottom. Let's see if that, because, uh, it looks different. There you go. Now save it. And uh, I'll fix it later. I think some of it got deleted, and that might be the problem. 
Okay, click on this. There you go. There go. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I would have never known that because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's what um, I'm I don't know how to stop sharing unless I can find it okay now I'm going to stop share yep all right so um I'm gonna drop the call now we're gonna go to the meetup um so the link is in the um cohort two uh student channel and slack um and I will see you all there and hopefully some of you feel confident enough or brave enough to share some of your capstone ideas because I think you guys have great ideas um so I'll see you there all right. Thanks, Caitlin. Have a good night. We'll You're so there. welcome. Bye. Bye.